Good morning, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. So it's Tech Thursday, and today we're going to be focusing on lighting design. So we're going to be looking at it through the lens of that design process from conception to implementation. We're also going to talk about a couple of things that are specific to lighting design, and then uh, I'll do a little bit of a demonstration using some of the things I have here around my house. So first things first, let's get ourselves a working understanding of what falls under the category of lighting design. Well, Anything that creates light in a theater falls under the heading of lighting design. Everything from the lights that are hung up above the actor's heads or out above the audience or the follow spots, the things that you know you see all the time where it's a big ball of light that just follows the person along. And also anything that lights up on the stage, anything that has that electricity on the stage. So for example, if there's a lamp on stage, if it lights up, the lighting designer has had a hand in that. Um, and the lighting crew has had a hand in that. So the lighting process works in a somewhat different fashion because in a lot of cases they can't really do their work until everything else is at a place at a good place. They can make con concepts of their lighting design. They can make concepts of where they're going to hang lights for the best cover of the stage. But until you know the walls and things of the set are built, they can't really know for sure if it's going to work. So a lighting designer at the beginning stages isn't focused so much on this is the exact way that the lights are going to hit, but when they do their research they're looking more for the feeling that they're going to try and create. And they look at that through colors, and with colors there are two general camps in colors, warm colors and cool colors. So warm colors are things like oranges, reds, yellows, ambers, some types of browns. Uh, in the cooler colors, we're talking about blues, greens, purples, all of these ones that are very calming. And it's basically the difference between daytime and nighttime type of colors. You know, when you think about the stereotype of day is bright and yellow and the night is dark and blue, that's cool versus warm right there. And they're going to find those things and they're going to figure out, okay, what feeling am I going to create? What atmosphere, what mood am I going to create with my lighting? And they'll find pictures that represent that mood, that idea. And that's what they'll show as their kind of research and concept. When it comes to their design, the second stage, they actually then go through all the work of they take a plan of the theater and they figure out, okay, what exact type of lighting fixture is going to go in each place? What do I need to do to make sure that all of those will run effectively? There's a lot of extra stuff that goes into lighting design. When we think about set, it's really easy to see what happens there because, you know, you have to build everything. You have to paint everything. The, the final result is fully visual to the audience. In lighting design, there is just as much work, but you as the audience will see almost none of it. Uh, and you most of the time will only see it if it goes wrong. Like if a spotlight turns on and the actor is three feet away from where the spotlight turns on then you'll notice. Or if the actor isn't in their light, then you'll notice. And at that point, it's not even the lighting designer's fault. But they're going to figure out how they have to power this because there's only so many plugs. There's only so many ways you can link lights together using a certain amount of, of power cables. They have to figure all of that out. They have to program the entire show because the person who runs the lights isn't just up there going, I'm turning on these three lights right now and these three lights right now. Or well, at least they aren't anymore. They used to. But they still had a plan for what lights needed to get turned on when and at what levels and things like that. And that is all on the lighting designer. And again, if it goes well, we may say, ooh, that's a pretty light. Or that's a really cool lighting effect. But then it's we don't think about it beyond that. We don't think about the work that goes into it. And I really, really want to impress upon you how much work truly goes into a fully realized lighting design. The implementation part is the actual physical work that has just been planned out. That's when the lighting designer and the electricians go up on ladders in lifts and actually put the lights up above the actors' heads, up above where the audience is. They fit in the gels, the gobos, the other things that all make this all work. Now, I just used two terms there, gels and gobos, and a gobo is the one I'm going to talk about first because I don't actually have one to demonstrate. A gobo is very simply a cut out image that you slide into a light so that the light projects that image. So for example, you could create a window gobo. So there's a little piece of metal that's cut, got a window cut out of it. You slide that into the light 
And when the light shines through that on the stage, you see a window. The gels are the ones I can demonstrate. So I have here a book of gels. And there are, and you can't really see them because my the whites keep showing, but there are hundreds of these little plastic sheets. And what you have is now, obviously, you're not putting one of these inside a big theatrical light. You have larger sheets of this. This is just a sample book, essentially. But what happens is when you use these, it changes the color of the light, like so. And you get this color light instead of the normal, you know, full white light from that lamp. And I remove that and boom. So the interesting thing about gels, though, is because of how they're made, they do eventually lose their color, especially if they're a darker color or a color like a blue. Those tend to fade a lot quicker. Um, and unfortunately, you do have to replace them quite a bit. However, things like that are changing. If you're looking to be more environmentally conscious, LEDs are starting to become more and more normal. And since LEDs produce next to no heat, gels will probably last a lot longer. Or, you know, you can also use color changing LEDs, both of which work. Um, to that note, the lighting is actually one of the reasons that, uh, well, theaters are often as cold as they are. Fun fact, those lighting instruments that are hung up above the stage and above the audience, those use typically anywhere from 500 to 1000 watt bulbs. Now, a typical incandescent light, which is what those bulbs are, produces 90% of its energy produces heat. So yeah, if theaters weren't cold, the actors would probably boil in their costumes. So you know, take a sweater the next time you go to the theater. Anyway, last thing I'm going to do before I sign off for the day and pitch Hamlet Friday for tomorrow is show you a really quick example of uh, why light is so important. I have my lights that are up on the ceiling, but I also have one light that's just off to my side here, which is the primary reason you can see me because... I click that off and notice how much darker I got. That is the importance of lighting design. I'll be back tomorrow for Hamlet Friday. Bye.